The Mass Association of Minority Law Enforcement Officers is celebrating a double milestone to tell us about an event marking its 50th anniversary and the recent appointment of Boston's first African-American police commissioner is the group's president, Larry Ellison. Thank you very much for being with us, Larry. Thank you for having me. appreciate you inviting me in on such a momentous occasion. I want to start you off with, with the history of going back 50 years ago, maybe before your time with Mamlio. How did this all get started? Well, uh, there were a group of gentlemen who saw the need for some changes in advocacy in the Boston Police Department and that they saw that people of color, particularly African Americans, were not being allowed into the Boston Police Department. And if they were at such small numbers, that there needed to be some change. And so they started the, uh, the it started out as MAP. It was the originally the Massachusetts Association of African American Police Officers, because uh, we only had African American officers that were participating in becoming police officers. And in, then in the late 70s, because our membership grew to, do, uh, to include more than just African American police officers, it was changed to MAMLIO, the Massachusetts Association of Minority Law Enforcement Officers, which is its current name today. Well, of course, the other thing that's, that's pretty obvious from uh, Mamlio is that it's an advocacy group, and there are things you need to advocate f for to make sure that everybody's being treated fairly in the department. Uh, give me an example. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, we were in your show, myself and Sophia Hall, from the, as a matter of fact, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, who is actually turning 50 this year as well. Uh, we were on your show several months ago uh, in one of the lawsuits regarding the drug hair testing. Uh, that's one of the issues that we've been taking, tackling, and since then we've had several officers who had been terminated over that policy return to work because of the advocacy of our organization. Now, another thing that's interesting here is you get into the dynamics of re representing police officers, but to some extent you're also trying to be advocates for community needs, public safety needs even. Uh, how does that work with uh, Manlio? Uh, that's very, we do a lot of work in the community. I think you're right. People think that we just advocate for police officers, but we do a lot of community outreach. We do uh, a lot of reaching out to young people, to the elderly. We have several, serve several events a year. Uh, we do Halloween parties, Christmas parties, Thanksgiving. We have karate classes there at our organizations. We have dance classes there for, for young girls there at our building. So there's a lot of outreach that goes on that is not police related. What I also read between those lines is that you're making contact with the community and maybe you're getting some people interested, motivated to join the police department. Is that going on as well? Well, absolutely. There's a young man that I mentored early in my career who uh, approached me, had some interest in becoming a police officer. He was 15 at the time. I didn't know this young man at all. I was doing a, a paid detail at, at the time. He approached me in the store and said, hey, I was interested. I've been turned down by several other police officers. I know you're going to say no as well. Uh, I'd like to see what you do. And I, I took him up on his offer, and I said, on one condition, that you take me to school with you. And he did, and uh, he went on a ride along with me. It was life-changing, and he has now been on the police department for five years. He graduated from high school, went on to college, and now he's a Boston police officer. Well, speaking of, of life-changing events, what got you onto the police department? Um, I was uh, attending South Boston High during busing, uh, and I happened to be the first African-American uh, senior class president in South Boston High, and at the time there was a gentleman there who was a superintendent, uh, Martin Mulkern, and because of my uh, activities as the president, I got a chance to be involved in a lot of uh, activities going on and, and issues in, within the school, and one of them was meeting regularly with the police department about safety, and we got to know each other, and he said to me, hey, you know, I think you'd be a good candidate for the Boston Police Cadet Program, which is not a police officer, the ones who wear the white shirts, and he said, you should take the test. And he brought me an application. I took the test, scored well, um, and became a police cadet. And then a year and a half later, I became a Boston police officer at 19. Uh, this is being a news, and we're talking with Larry Ellison, the president of Mamlio. Um, uh, Larry, speaking of the cadet program, I think that's the program that uh, William Gross uh, was, uh, we, we was were, in at one point, too. We were cadets together. We came on as cadets together. And we came on the police department the same year in 1985. Now, uh, for people who are not familiar with that program, I mean, this is a way for people who might be stymied by civil service and veterans' preference maybe to have a chance, right? It is, but I think it's also, uh, and more importantly in my opinion, is to give you an opportunity and insight into the police department before you actually jump in. A lot of people just come on the job has been uh, not having had the experience of the in, inner workings of the police department. So the cadet program, you get to see different units, you get to see different aspects, and then really decide whether or not it's for you. But the other way is you just join, and then you decide maybe it's not, but you've kind of been invested too much at that point. 
Well, I should mention, uh, now that we've brought up uh, William Grass, uh, he's the, you know, the first African-American commissioner in Boston, and he's going to be a central figure in your celebration. He is. He's actually uh, going to be receiving an award um, from our organization. He's a member. It's the first time that Mamlio has had a commissioner who is a, a member of Mamlio. And uh, what, what else is going to be happening during the, uh, the anniversary celebration? Well, the governor will be there speaking, as well as uh, Mayor Mark Walsh. Uh, they've agreed to come and participate with us. Um, it's going to be a great time. We're going to be uh, handing out scholarships to students uh, deserving who are going off to college. We're going to be recognizing some of the work that folks in the community have been doing as well. Uh, looking back over this, uh, what about your own involvement? What, what got you active in, in Mamlio to start um, with? Almost, I've been the president now. I've had the pleasure of serving as the president of this organization for the last 10 years. And I was approached uh, early on as a cadet by a gentleman by the name of Charles Dickerson, who was one of the former presidents, but also he was the building manager there. And I would go around and help him clean up around the building every day. And I got a history of what it was like to be a police officer of color, particularly a black police officer during that time, and why it was important that I got involved. Do you think it's changed that much over the years? It has changed. Um, I think we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, but it has changed. Like I said, you just mentioned that we have the first African-American police commissioner. And I just hope that it gets to the point where that's not the issue that the person is, that we recognize their, their ethnicity, but we just say he is the police commissioner and not African-American. We should mention uh, for people who might... Uh, want to go to this event. Is there anything we can say about when and where it's happening and how they can follow up with sure. that? Sure. It's going to be held on Friday, um, October 19th at Lombardo's in Randolph from 7 p.m. to 12 midnight. Uh, we still have a few tickets left, but we're right now we're at over 400 people are, are expected to attend the event on Friday night.